Hey guys, so this is part two of the Arches series and we are going over how you can convert your files, your IDs, your information you have in Houdini. So you have this giant wireframe of information and orientation attributes and transformation attributes. How to convert this to geometry, how to keep your uh, hierarchy clean and that kind of stuff. So let's dive in. Hey guys, welcome to part two of the series. So make sure, first of all, you have part one done and you have the files in front of you because we're gonna continue with uh, the same file. All right, if you don't have it, you can download it from our website. So let's get started. First of all, this uh, part regarding the copy to points, the pillars, uh, well, this body wire is not needed. So let's just delete it. And I want to create another subnet. We're gonna place the subnet next to our arches and our second input is going to be uh, the same thing that goes into the arches. Let's color the screen so we know it's doing something. And well, let's dive in. So we're gonna start with creating geometry for our arches. So let's place down a fuse. So we are sure there are no double points because of the bevel. Well, after that, let's place down a primitive wrangle because this primitive wrangle is gonna help us with our uh, geometry later because we're gonna use the add node to create some primitives. And we need an ID attribute, which is linked uh, for the primitives. All right. And this is gonna be equal to at prim num. All right, now every primitive has its own ID. Now, at remote, I want this attribute of the ID, I want this to be on the points. So let's get it from primitives, ID and set it to points. Uh, average is fine, it's uh, the same for per primitive, so that's nice. Then place down a sort node. I want that all the points are sorted nicely regarding uh, the vertex order. And after that, we're gonna place down a body frame. And this body frame is going to point our normals to the outside. So if you right now have a look at the normals, they're pointing outside, that's nice. That's exactly what we want. And this is how we are going to be offsetting our curve. So place down a point VOP. And inside of this point VOP, we're gonna place down a multiply. And we are also going to place the, we're first dragging the normal in there and remote parameter, uh, the second input of the multiply. All right, and now set this a little bit higher. And we're going to be adding this to the position. First, we need to negate it because they're pointing outwards. We want them to point inwards. Let's add those together and let's add this into the position. All right, we can turn off the normals again. And now we have a nice slider to offset our curve. Now, this is where the ID is going to be coming in. First, we need to place down a sort because this one needs to be reversed. Then place down a merge and an add node. And wire them into the merge wire them into the add node. And the add node, uh, we're gonna delete geometry, but keep the points, uh, do it by group, attribute, and attribute is gonna be called ID. And then we want to have closed primitives. All right, that's looking like how we want it. And then just to make sure we have some clean geometry, let's place a divide after this. Uh, that's looking nice. All right, then you can copy over the ID part and we're going to be using the second input. So let's copy this over, wire it in there, and now place down a sort again, uh, or just copy this sort, it's the same one. We are gonna be sorting them based on vertex order to make sure everything is uh, well congruent with each other. All right, now this one is going to be above it, so we need to transform it. It needs to be transformed based on our height value. And our height value, we still had it from last time, so we just copy over the height. Let's dive into our subnet again. 
and paste it in the y direction. Oh, that's a mistake. Let's do this again. So let's get the height value, copy perimeter, and let's paste it in there. Paste the relative reference. All right, there we go. As you can see right now, we have a little bulge over there. If you don't want it, uh, let's place down a transform in the beginning. And let's scale the y direction to zero. And now that the bulge is gone, depending on if you have terrain or uh, different heights, do with it what you want. All right, let's dive into our settings again. And now we're going to do the same thing. So grab the merge, throw the merge in there. We need the second one over there. And this is looking fine. Oh, I see there's one little uh, thing went wrong, the last one. So um, we had this top height over there. And um, over here you see there's a little error. So make sure this one, uh, probably something went wrong last time when I created it, needs to be uh, referencing to the right path. All right, so now it works again. So uh, that's looking nice. So we have our two basic geometries over there. And now we're just gonna do some simple extrusions. So let's grab these body extrudes. So you usually want to do the poly extruding uh, latest as possible and uh, do everything at the same time. Don't use for loops for this because that will, begin, will become very heavy. So try to avoid uh, for loops as much as possible because usually you can get away if you just use uh, ID attributes. All right, so we need the radius. So let's copy parameter of the radius and let's paste it in there. Although the radius is, of course, twice as large. Right now, I want it to be the half of the size of the diameter. So I'm going to go with the radius, which is fine. And I'm going to be multiplying this one by 0.5, actually. Because I'm going to do another extrude. And this extrude is going to be the back. So I'll put back, extrude back. This one is going to be selecting, extrude back. And right now, quick way to... Uh, some nice geometry following the lines. All right, and we want to do the same thing for the other side. There we go. It's looking nice. Now place down a merge. Wire those in, place an output node. And there we go. All right. Now let's place down another subnet. I'm gonna call this top parts. Oh, we can call this middle part. Make sure you do some nice naming for now. It really doesn't matter that much. Just make sure you know what what means so you don't uh, lose your way. We're in the stuff from the primitive fob one. All right. It only needs one input. And what we want to do is a basic sweep. And for this, we need the backbone to be our input, and we want to have a line to follow the other part. You could also do this for uh, the, the initial part for certain things. If, if they don't have weird shapes, you can usually use a sweep, but also try to avoid the sweep because it's heavy. But for now, uh, I already showed you a different way to make it. So it doesn't matter that much. So take the length and copy it into the origin. And I want it to be the Z direction and then multiply it by minus 0.5. So it's nice in the middle. All right, the length should be way smaller and the length we're gonna Make sure it's the radius. All right, so there, and the radius times 2.1, I think that's nice. All right, all right, that's looking fine. Then make sure your sweep is also set to uh, skin with other closure, and then place down a body extrude. And this body extrude, the distance is going to be our top height. So let's copy that over. And let's copy that over into the distance. So right now it's going up, but we want it to go down because later on we're gonna transform everything up to the height. All right, that's looking better. Then make sure it's closed by sending output back, uh, turning it on. And now one final transform, and this transform is going to need the value from our height. So let's go into our control node, gets the height, and let's paste it into the transform, into the Y direction. All right, there we go. As you can see, that one is working now. 
Now let's drag this up. I think it's better. Place on another subnet. And I'm gonna be calling this one apart. Color it green, so I know what it is. And I want this to have the input of the convert line because it, I need it to be the same for each point. I don't need any other stuff. So that's nice. Go in there. Let's start by making placing down a grid. And this grid is going to have a size that's also depending on our radius. So let's grab the radius real quick. Paste it in there and paste it in there. And multiply it by three. Oh, yes. All right. There we go. And I only need two rows, two columns. And place down a poly extrude. With a poly extrude, I'm going to show you a neat little thing. If you go, uh, uh, well, first we need to add a new value because this is going to be our bottom height. We don't have that one yet because it's not really dependent on that much stuff. So let's call it bottom height. All right. And let's copy this over. Let's drag it to about that. And just to make it easier, let's change the range a little bit. All right, now make sure you have this one. And we're gonna be pasting this into the distance. And it's going upwards, perfect. Uh, I wanted a few more divisions. And now if I go to the spline control and I can adjust the thickness, you can see I can make some nice cool patterns. So you can, you can make something cool, whatever you want. For now, doesn't really matter. So I'm gonna stick with this. Then I'm going to place down a point angle. And the point rank, I'm just gonna set the up vector. And I'm gonna do it like this. Equals one. Oh, there we go. So we have a nice up vector. Then place down a body frame. So we have our nice orientation attributes. There we go, a normal and an up attribute for our orientation. So we can place down a copy to points. And it's copy to points. It's gonna copy this object onto those points, like this. Uh, we didn't have normals yet. Let's just place some normals after that. Uh, there we go. That's looking better. Uh, all right, and place an output node, of course. Now, let's place another subnet. I'm placing another subnet because that really, really makes it very easy to maintain some high clarity over your system. So I would really recommend you also trying to put as much stuff as possible into subnets and naming them correctly. So uh, I'm gonna be calling this Arches Detail. It's about right. And let's first make our little detail thing. So let's place down a curve. Let's get into, what shall we do? Right view, right. And make sure you start at 0, .0, 0 because that's where our uh, copy to points point is going to be B. and let's make something like this you could take a little bit more effort to make this but for now this is fine now place down a poly extrude and this poly extrude and this poly extrude is going to need the value based on our radius again so let's copy let's copy that and let's paste it in there. Oh, that's the wrong one. And let's paste it in there. So we go to our distance and we can set it to uh, the perspective view again. You can also use those numbers, of course. Uh, one, two, three, or four or five, whatever you want. Um, yeah, so let's wire this in there. And you can see the scale is a little bit off. So let's place a transform node. So it is a little bit better. We're gonna tweak this value later on, of course. Right now I want to set it to zero point, yeah, zero point one or something. Should be fine. All right. Then I want to have a point fob because we're gonna be using our input. And our input is not this convert line. It is actually the set radius because those are the points uh, we will be using. Oh. Don't use the bottom part for that, the arch detail, of course. I keep messing up. All right, let's make sure we have this one focused. And if you look at this, 
Now we need some nice orientation attributes for this and we want these little uh, detail things to point towards the middle. So how can we do this? We go into inside of our point vop. Let's place a get attribute node. And I want to get the position of a primitive, of the primitive belonging to the point. So grab the first input, vector three, position, that's all nice. And make sure you have prim num wired in there. Now, if I would be adding a point right now, you'll be able to see where this one gets. And in the middle of the primitive, now two points are spawned, which is perfect. All right, let's delete this again. Place down a negate. And we're going to be adding the negated value of the position to this primitive value. So we get our direction. Let's normalize this and wire it into the normal. As you can see, our points are pointing inwards now. Now we need to place down another point wrangle. And we need to do the same thing for the up vector. So let's set it to one. There we go. Now you can place down a copy to points. We're in the points for our copy to points to the right and our object to the left. And there we go. Right now it's also copying along uh, multiple things. But we can see it's not in the middle at the moment. So we can fix that by placing another transform. And we basically need the radius or this, this value, whatever this value is, and paste it in here. And now multiply by minus 0.5 again. There we go. And we can see that they are uh, going the wrong direction. So let's place a transform node and let's rotate it by 180 degrees. And that's all right. Now make sure that the output back is turned on and we want to give them some normals. There we go. Now, don't forget to place an output node. And also don't forget to transform them up. So we're gonna place transform node. And first of all, we're gonna be needing our height. So let's get our top height or our uh, normal height, not our top height, of course. Let's get the height value, paste it in the Y direction, and then also get the relative height. Let's copy that and let's multiply it with our height. There we go. As you can see right now, if we place down a merge, we already have almost everything we want. We have our pillars, we have some middle parts, we have top parts, bottom parts, and details for the arches. Everything has normals yet. I'm just right now placing a normal at the end, but uh, it's, it's, it's a good manner to usually uh, place the normals right after you create them. And yeah. And before I want to end this tutorial, I first want to make one nice uh, addition to this. So if you place down a resample and a switch node, then we can add one nice little function to this. So um, right now it's switching between the resample and between the other thing. And if we go up to our subnet, or if for right now we can use our control node actually. And we can add a toggle and a float. Set, and we're gonna make a variable called set distances. And let's turn this on for distance. Oh, there we go. Now let's set this to a nice value which makes sense in our current way. And let's grab the set distances and put it into their switch. So now if you put on set distances, all the arches will have the exact same size and you'll be able to change that with this variable, which is a nice addition if you want to have uh, your arches to all have the exact same size. All right. Well, uh, that was it for this tutorial. I hope you have enjoyed it. Make sure to check out our site. There you can find all our scene files so you can get the most out of these tutorials. And that was it. So for now, this was Dokai. Bye bye.